architecture and urban planning is very different everywhere you go. From the European medieval cities to the African kingdoms, they all have their own unique history. Today we will talk about feudal Japanese city and village planning and design. Welcome to the Glim. In the beginning of the feudal times, Japan had only a small percentage of the world's total population. However, they had one of the biggest percentages of the world's urban population. At this time around 7 million, and perhaps even more Japanese peasants lived in Japan. About 3% of the people in Japan lived in cities, and the rest of the population lived in rural villages. Big cities like Osaka, Kyoto and Tokyo, formerly known as Edo were very crowded places in feudal Japan. So it makes sense that when you have a lot of citizens, you need a lot of living space. And just like any big city, housing blocks were the solution. But there were some unique interesting features in the Japanese designs that were significantly different from other big cities around the world. The typical housing blocks would be connected to each other with enclosed backyards. These rows of houses were usually divided by a grid-like street network. Usually the street would form sections that were acting like gated communities, divided by gates and guarded by night, only allowing the inhabitants or people with permission to pass through. Security was the main purpose of these settlements. Since such settlements were directly administered by what are called prefectures in Japan, it was difficult to provide a lot of extensive services. And thus, Gated communities had a governing function to self-manage the necessary range of services, normally arranged by the local government. Most of these communities were controlled by a council of elders. Nowadays, in Japan the Building Standards Act, stipulates that residential areas must always be connected to a public road, and therefore forbids construction of these type of communities. Post towns. Traveling by land was very usual in feudal Japan for both trade and tourism. While traveling the road from city to city, you would often find post towns. Places where merchants, pilgrims and other travelers could rest and spend a day or two before continuing their journey. The easy access to trading networks attracted industrious villagers, and soon they would specialize in products to supply the bigger cities and other post towns. A good example of one of these post towns is Aramatsu, a small town on the main road of land travel between Kyoto and Tokyo. Here for instance the villagers developed a lot of different unique and interesting techniques for dyeing cloth which then they could sell to all the merchants, pilgrims and travelers passing through Aramatsu every day. The planning in these post towns was similar to the bigger cities but because there was more space, of course, they were not as tightly packed as in the bigger cities. They still neatly strung along the road, most of the times with their storefronts facing towards the streets, and the workshops, warehouses, living quarters, and backyards away from the street. This would make sure that travelers wouldn't miss any of the sold items in these occasions. Over time some of these routes such as for instance the Tokaido Road fell out of use, but the dyeing cloth craftsmanship, as well as the historical buildings, remain for you to experience feudal Japanese tradition. There are many Edo-style buildings in Aramatsu that have been repurposed as craft shops and restaurants for shopping and dining. Back to the overview again. Besides the roads, the houses, and the storefronts in these post towns, usually there was place for a temple or religious building, like in this example. There's a temple for the pilgrims and travelers at the edge of the village, where it meets the nature and where the road continues. Farming Villages Most feudal villages in Japan were farming villages by default. But there were some villages more so than others. The ones that were not on a road usually were relying more on their farms. These are the type of villages we are talking about now. 
In most villages around the world farming villages were, and still are typically quite spread out. But in these villages, most of the houses were very bunched up because of the feudal structure. Farming, mostly rice farming, was a community affair, and the villagers together would collectively farm the lands of their lord, known as a daimyo, and pay him taxes. Water dominated the village's lifestyle because rice is grown in water. Because they still needed to pay taxes they needed to make the most use out of the land, and not everywhere was suitable for for instance rice plantations. These so-called daimyos owned most of the inhabitable land and thus most of the time you would not live in a house that was owned by yourself on your own plot of land. But this was totally fine. Actually, it was preferred by most small farmers. Because on these estates also known as shoan, the land was properly irrigated, whereas small independent farmers had to do with rainfall or natural underground sources. Because they still needed to pay taxes they needed to make the most use out of the land, and not everywhere was suitable for for instance rice plantations. So instead people would build all the houses in places where the land wasn't as suitable for farming. For instance on small hills where it was harder to redirect water to. Then these clusters of houses would be surrounded by rice fields, if suitable, while ground that wasn't so good was more commonly used for vegetable, fruit and grain plantations. Cattle wasn't a big part of Japanese agriculture yet. This was no problem as most Japanese people in this time preferred seafood over meat, both for its abundance but also because of Buddhism, which prohibits the killing of animals and birds. Because nature can be quite harsh, and the possibility of huge storms wiping out crops, it is not surprising that the people came up with gods for their food. For instance the god Inari was established as the national rice god, but even the rice fields themselves had their own protective Shinto spirits called kami. An important part of agriculture were ceremonies and rituals, especially around harvest time, which were meant to be sure of a good harvest and off course, to protect the farms and fields from natural disasters. Fishing Villages Along the long coasts of Japan you'll find a lot of villages that have a lot of similarities with the post towns. Most coastal areas in Japan often consist of a small space of inhabitable land where the mountainside meets the ocean. So these settlements are very much crammed in between the shoreline and the rocks, with usually a single road passing through, with houses on both sides. These two-story houses on the waterside, known as funaya, also serve as boathouses, with the first level being a boat shed, and the upper level being the living space. Many of these funaya have been renovated into guest houses or Airbnbs to allow visitors to live with families and to minimize the impact of tourism on the environment. Most funaya owners have a second house on the mountainside opposite in the street. This allows guests to stay in the fishermen's houses, and admire the beautiful ocean. These old fishing villages were, and still are considered to be along the most beautiful villages in Japan, sometimes even called the Venice of Japan. Even nowadays there are some people still living the same way of life they used to. This way of life is called Sado-omi, which means to live together at the edge of the sea, in great harmony with the great nature. A good example of one of these villages is Inecho. The fishermen in Inecho still use an old fishing technique, throwing something like a cage called a mandori in the sea, straight from their funayas. Techniques like angling and fishing nets are used as well, but they make sure to only catch a limited number of fish to keep the balance with nature. A great contrast with the big whaleboats of enormous sizes that have a great, mostly negative impact on the ocean. Mountain Villages Moving into the mountains, we can also find settlements, mostly very hidden towns. In these settlements, buildings were usually a lot more spread out than on the plains, 
where fertile land was to be preserved in any way possible, but also, because it may have been very difficult to cramp a lot of buildings together in the harsh terrain. The residents living here usually lived a very peaceful life, without conflict. Because these towns were very isolated, unaffected by war, most of these towns are along Japan's best preserved towns. Some of these areas still retain the character of the old times. With meager harvests, long distances to get necessary resources, and harsh weather, life was both peaceful but also very hard in these kind of towns. Some of the reasons for villagers to move to these towns were for instance the abundance in gold and other precious metals, while others moved to these places for the peace and tranquility, or mountain worship. People thought that these hidden villages were a peaceful world without any sorrow, and there is a flow at times different from the human world. It is said that travelers visiting these remote settlements, also known as Kaku Rezado, usually were received with open arms and kind hospitality, but when they tried to visit the village again, they were usually not able to, because these villages were so well hidden. A good example of this type of town is Takayama. Go here and you will travel back in time. From the wood-built Senmachi Suji neighborhood and tiny museums to antique dealers and cafes hidden behind the centuries-old storefronts, traveling to this city nowadays is like using a time travel machine. Takayama also hosts one of Japan's best festivals, the Takayama Matsuri. It is one of the biggest festivals in Japan. While its origins remain uncertain, it is thought that these parades might date from the feudal times. Temple and Castle Towns Feudal Japan had many villages developing around the great amount of castles and temples that were spread across the islands of Japan. These type of towns are referred to as Yokomachi or Joka, before the early modern period. The design of these villages was aimed to stimulate commerce by building the closest main road to pass through the city so that traffic occurs within the settlement. The main road usually passed through the front of the castle to demonstrate the power of authority. It were these places where the high-ranked samurai were living close to the castle, with the non-samurai city dwellers such as merchants and craftsmen further away from the castle. Yokomachi incorporated a lot of ideas to strengthen the city's defense. To be safe from invaders, they cleverly used rivers, dug moats, stone walls, and sometimes constructed heavy gateways. These dug moats were also used as canals and played a large role in the distribution of goods. Sometimes these settlements had a big strategic importance. When they did, houses usually were very tightly located on either side of the main street to make it harder to get a direct view of the castle. Roads were cranked or had dead ends to elongate the route to the castle, thus making it more difficult to invade it. Other sections of the city built fences and smaller gates, shutting them at night to ward off intruders. Within the Yokomachi, smaller districts like Samurai Machi, Ashiguru Machi, Chonin, and Terra Machi surrounded the castle. Most of the times, higher-ranked vassals owned a compound closer to the castle. People with a lower status like merchants and craftsmen were often forced to live at the outer rim of these chonin districts. These houses were usually tightly packed along the streets and much smaller in land size, especially compared to the samurai machi, the places where samurai resided. This is why a chonin house had a narrow entrance and great depth. It was referred to as an eel's nest. A lot of times it had two floors, but only the first floor was inhabited. The second floor was mostly used as a storeroom, to avoid looking down at their lords. Nowadays, more than half of Japan's cities with a population of over 100,000 are former Yokomachi. But most do not look the same as they used to. War damage, fires, and urban development have changed these cities for good. If you enjoyed this documentary, please consider subscribing, and of course,
Let us know what you think of this documentary.